Hi Floss Tube. This is Barb with Lost and Floss. This is video number 55, I believe. Double nickels. Um, and today is January 27th, 2021. My first video from the new year. Um, I haven't, well, to begin with, um, for, for those of you who have never been to my channel before, welcome. It is a channel primarily about cross stitch and a little rambling. So if that doesn't interest you, probably want to keep searching. Um, for everyone else, welcome back. And um, it's, I'm trying to think, like been probably, I know it was before Christmas, so um, maybe going on six weeks since I last recorded and I have <laughs> lots to show you today. Maybe not too many finishes, but um, progress on a lot of things. Um, right away, I just want to thank people who have joined in the WordPlace sale, and I'll talk more about that as we go on. Um, and just so I don't forget to mention this, starting February 1st, um, I'm going to be doing Finish It February sale. And let's put it right here or there or there. Well, you know how it goes. <laughs> Wherever it fits is where it's going to go. But this is how it works for me. And I highly, highly recommend. Um, I think this will be the third year I'm doing it. But it just involves no new starts for the whole month. I mean, it's 28 days. I think as hard as it can be at times, I think anyone can make 28 days without a start if, if you have a lot of whips. Um, and, and the rule was, <laughs> for me, um, if I finished all my whips, then I could have a new start. But, you know, <laughs> chances are I would never finish all my whips in 28 days. The other thing is there's no rules against starting something up until, let's see, March 31st, 11.59 p.m. So I think I think the first year I kind of got myself a little bit in trouble because that's what I did. I started all this stuff um, brand new. And so I really didn't get um, into my stuff, whip stuff. To finish as much as I would have liked to but it just it's it's amazing how you know those projects that you just maybe need to stitch on a night how you can get them done in that length of time so um I hope some of you join me I it's fun um it's a little bit of self-control which sometimes is is hard to uh come up with but um yeah so anyways um let me start with stitchy kindness first because I do not want to forget these items. Um, this arrived before Christmas, but um, Karen, my Christmas stocking sale partner, um, who stitched a uh, stocking for her grandson, the same one I was stitching for mine, um, sent me this cute little card and then she made me this darling ornament. Look how cute that is. So I, I love the fact I don't have anything like this to commemorate 2020. So it will be really cute, cute remembrance of the year and of stitching along with Karen. So thank you so much, Karen. That was really nice. And then, so Valerie <laughs> stitching in the barn. Uh, one day this package arrived from her and I'm like, oh, what is this? And I opened it up and honestly, I had these two <laughs> items on my wish list. Um, the Winds of Autumn I had in my cart, but um, so yeah, she sent me this, which I, I just love all, everything that's in here. So thank you so much, Valerie. And then like the big kids or the cool kids, uh, Needlework Enthusiasts. 2021 book of days so I'm going to use that too it's kind of fun to have a, a monthly I know you guys have all seen this but you know monthly 
Um, I used the Stitcher's notebook from Fat Quarter Shop um, to list my individual starts, but um, I think it'll be kind of fun to have this too. So thank you so much, Valerie. You're such a sweetie. Um, and I will talk about Chris, um, one of our local stitchy ladies, gifted um, a few of us a wonderful Christmas sale to open up. I think I showed the, <laughs> the wrap packages last time, but um, what it was she had included um, a chart, floss, Hand dyed fabric, which is just gorgeous. Wait till you see it. It's just really beautiful. Um, thread drops, a scissor fob. Uh, you know, it's just just beautiful. So um, I'll show that when I show my piece that I stitched along with. Um, okay, so oh, I have to do my public service announcement <laughs> before I go any further. Um, and I keep thinking about Long Dog Stitcher because <laughs> she spilled some water on a on her um, her hand dyed fabric, and and she kept saying, "I can't have nice things." Well, I was pressing my autumn time, and you still can see it a little bit, but I had major watermarks in the corner. So I thought, well, what have I got to lose? I really didn't feel like, I knew I could take it apart and, um, you know, slim down the margins, but but I had this stuff, it's a like carpet cleaning or fabric cleaning solution. Um, comes in a little spray pump called Tech. I think it's T-E-C-H. And I had used it years ago, um, when I had gotten a little bit of fingernail polish on carpeting and my sister had found out about it. Um, house they moved into had a lot of fingernail polish on the carpeting. And so I thought, well, I'll just pull it out and try it on the part that I know would be in the new margin if I tore it apart and did it again. And I'm not kidding guys, It, you can see it Oh, my light's going to be getting bad in here. You can see it a little bit, but not nearly, you know, now I think it just looks more like modeling in the in the fabric itself. So, you know, don't blame me if it doesn't work or if it makes things worse. But if you're at the point where you're going to maybe try, you know, starting over, I would say, you know, give it a try and see if it works for you. Um... I think maybe it would start, I didn't go treat it again because I was afraid. I thought maybe it was starting to lighten up the fabric a little bit. So, you know, if you really have a dark fabric, that might be a, another problem. But I don't know. Like sometimes if you're going to, you know, get rid of the thing anyways, like, you know, might as well give it a try. So. That's my announcement. Um, and then one other thing I wanted to mention, um, you know, um, um, Sunday was a year um, since we lost Leanne and a number of you reached out with really nice notes and I appreciate that. Um, to go along with that, Back last year, um, Roseanne from our local Stitchy group, she met Leanne's mom at her funeral and just, you know, just couldn't say enough about, you know, their conversation and really wanted to do something special for her. And so she came up with this idea about doing um, a group stitch along where it was one piece and, you know, she sent it to numerous different different people um, and chose Baby It's Cold Outside because of the significance um, to the whole stitching community and Leanne and I stitching that one. Um, so it went to, I don't know, five, six people in 
Wisconsin and then um, Roseanne also, uh, you might have seen, I think Steph showed it when she was working on it, but Pam and Steph of Just Keep Stitching worked on it and then they sent it back and um, I stitched on it last. They didn't leave me too much, so that was good. Um, and I found a frame I could use. I think I had to paint it white, but um, framed it and then sent it off to Leanne's parents um, right before Christmas. And just with a little note of the, the history and, um, I, you know, obviously they were really touched and, um, you know, I just thought it was just such a nice idea that Roseanne came up with. So I am going to include a picture of the project here. And thank you, Roseanne, for organizing that. And also the nice card you sent. Appreciate that. But now we have to we have to go on to fun things um so as many of you know um each time i was thinking i was done with the stocking uh there'd be announcement of a new grandchild so i finished grandson number three before christmas and now just picked out the stocking for the youngest one who is one um, I've mentioned before, my rule is I have to finish the stocking by the time they're, not their third Christmas, but when they're three for Christmas. <laughs> and so that means I have a little under two years to get this one done. Um, and I picked out, well, along with my daughter's um, approval, Santa's flight stocking. It's another Dimensions Gold Collection one. But, love the, love the, I love like the little town and the sleigh. I mean, the thing that scares me about this one is all that blue on top again, but I'm really gonna try to, you know, have a working copy or else do it digitally and really, mark off where I'm at so I don't get confused like it did with the last one and hopefully it'll be a better experience so um pretty excited actually I I wanted to I really want to start on this before February so I can at least do a little bit and you know I was thinking um there's a lot of different you know like I think Priscilla has Santa Sundays or um, something like that, but you know, I thought I really should pick um, one day where I'm working on it. Um, in May, I always do Mania My Way, where I take one project and work on it for an hour a day, and then I can stitch on whatever projects after that hour. And usually it's been my stocking. Um, so maybe I'll try to take that approach even, even you know, earlier so that... Um, I get get a start on it so but anyways um so I was off for 17 days over Christmas and you'd have thought I would have gotten a lot lot done but um I don't know the time goes fast and we had quarantine so we got together with you know our kids and um, our daughter's family and did some zooming of other events so it just was a nice, nice, relaxed time with family and, and just being with those grandkids. I mean, oh my gosh, I can't say enough about that, but, um, yeah. So anyways, but you want to see my stitching, I'm sure. So I really did have a lot of stitching time, I guess, and, um, made some good progress on some of my whoops that you've seen before. Um, so I guess I'll start showing them. So this is, yes, Virginia. And I really, I mean, I'm getting pretty close to meeting up here. So I think this is one I'm going to try to concentrate on in February and get that completed. Um, let's see here. I've got all this stuff all over. 
Um, then I made some good progress on this Broderie à Paris by Sue Hillis. I know I'm getting kind of a glare. And I love this. I'm using Cranberry Belle Soir. So it has a little variation, variegation, but not overly much. But really pretty. I really, really like the design, and uh, I've got, I've got quite a bit more to go. So I don't know that I'll get that done in February, but you never know, right? I've been chugging away on Home for Christmas by Plum Street Samplers. And it seems like anybody who stitched that this all say there's a lot more stitching in there than I thought there would be. Um, in fact, somebody, they, they hadn't done the bottom, so they left it off and I thought, oh, you know, I think having the top and not the bottom would have looked more balanced than I'm on the bottom. So I probably will end up doing the top, but I've almost got the whole whole bottom border done. And then, you know, like, uh, I'm trying to think. The top, part, well, the top border is a beast, but you know, the house is done and there's just some flowers and some wording. Um, someone on Instagram had changed the words. I can't think of what they used, but if, if I can find their post, I will um, mention it next time. So that's kind of fun and made some progress on it. Um, this one was a new start. There were so many people starting things on inauguration day and I'm like, well, why don't I do that? And I thought, you know, really you should do like, like any voting day or inauguration day or, you know, anything of that nature. It's kind of fun. So anyways, I chose Little House Needleworks America. I think this has been around for a while. Um, but it's just, I always like it every time I see it. Um, I'm going to use the call for threads. I'm stitching it on 32 count country French rain. It's really a pretty blue. I had this in my stash and I'm like, yeah, I should use that. So I think the white shows up nicely on it or whatever, off-white, whatever color it is. And, um, you know, I'll probably stitch on it here and there. It's kind of, you know, there's there's certain charts that are kind of nice, mindless type things. Then I pulled this one out. It's a Chessie and Me um, Wisconsin River Sampler. This too, it, it's not a quick one. I mean, it has specialty stitches and my problem is I don't work on it often enough and then I have to read, you know, do this before that and do this with one thread and blah, blah, blah. But I've made some progress. I've got some grass growing finally. And, you know, the best thing is my border's done, so <laughs> I don't have to worry about that meeting up, which is really good. So, um, I don't know. This one, I'm not, like, I'll just keep plugging away on it. I'm not really nose to the grindstone down on it because I just have to, um, I just have to be in the mood for it. It's one of those that, I don't know, I just can't always work on. And then, let's see, what is this? Winter Rose Manor with thy needle and thread. So many people are working on this that I don't know where I put my cover picture. All I have is the chart here. But um, in hindsight, I wish I would have had a little more contrast between, oh, it's really getting a shadow here. I guess I go like this. Between, um, my house color and the fabric. 
but I'm gonna keep going with it and if I have to you know outline it with something else just to make it pop a little bit more that's what I'll do but so many people have just like crunched this one and it's just so beautiful so I can't wait and I mentioned I was going to start Prairie Schooler January. This was my Stitchy Kindness. Really cute. And this one actually is going a lot faster. It doesn't have a lot of filled in snow or grass. So I have the bottom chunk done. And the words will go pretty fast. So I don't know that I'll get this done in January, but um, I hope to, you know, at least get it pretty close so that then I can get it out next year and have it to put up. Um, and then I probably, I don't know if I'm gonna, I still have to get the chart yet for April. Because I was thinking, well, I have February and March, but I don't know that I I would, I'd have to start February like now before February 1st. And I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, and I don't know if I'd get March done. I, I almost think I'd be better off starting April. Well, that's, I'll, I'll think about that later. Um, and then let's see. Okay. This was a gift from Kathy of True Dye House. It's a drawn thread the night before Christmas. And I made a little bit more progress on this one too. So this is another one I hope I finish up in um, February. Cause I really, you know, it really shouldn't take all that much longer. I have, an error that I am just going to work around and um, rather than rip. So we'll see if that gets done or not. I have a lot. <laughs> More than I thought. Um, I, I was just really trying to, you know, last year um, Michelle Fine Girl Loves Goats or Crafts. Um, she did a stitch stitch 10 and 20 which I didn't really stick with that much but those 10 items were still kind of on my flagged list and so I think I got five out of the 10 done which was pretty good but um I still have five to go I think um I know the cabin is one of them I I can't remember I'd have to go back and look and see but um I'm making progress this one is Drawn Thread, Welcome Christmas. And this one too, I don't know why I just don't spend a night and finish it up. Um, I did change a lot of the colors, but I, you know, you can see that I really don't have a heck of a lot more to go. I'm really sorry for this lighting. I always think I should get one of those halo lights one of these days. I don't know. Some year I'll get organized. Okay. Oh, I know there's, there's some things. Hmm, where are those things? Yeah, I'll find them. Um, okay. So wordplay sale. I've been wanting to do the word plays probably since I got back into stitching. I just thought they were so darn cute. And I don't know, I, I just always assumed they would take longer. And they really, they really go pretty fast. Um, so I showed you January last time and I'll show you, I had that FFO'd. Um, but I've been working on February. Ooh. And um, yeah, it's just, a, it's a cute one. And I kind of did, I wanted to brighten it up a little bit. So I used kind of a mix of called for and my own colors. 
but I really, um, the only thing I've been, the gold color, I didn't think the letters popped enough. So I've been kind of pulling those out and restitching. So those are kind of like Valentine. You can see it's half one way, half another. Um, cause I did, I did want them to show up and I thought maybe the gold I had used originally was too variegated. So, I mean, I could consider this done, but I probably will keep on tearing those things out. But then, you know, I figure I can start March right away, um, before, <laughs> before February 1st. So that. I've got like such a pile of stuff here. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, but then we'll go on to FOs. I don't know. <laughs> the other night I was um, stitching and all of a sudden I'm like pulling and I'm like, I can't, I can't get my needle through and I looked down and I had sewn through a like just a little bit of my skin but just enough that I couldn't couldn't um you know get get my finger out which is kind of funny all right so back at it um so like probably 50% of the other stitching community or not of the other 50% of the stitching community um, I've been stitching some Valentine's things and, um, I did a couple little freebies. This is on 32 count winter brew and the one on the left, oh, I just read the person's name who designed it. It originally was, um, designed as a piece, um, when Australia had their wildfires, um, back in, uh, was it 2019? Um, anyways, um, but the person just had a post that said, you know, feel free to use it, you know, don't, don't send them to, don't follow the instructions to send them to Australia anymore, but you can feel free to stitch it. Um, so I just used that DMC, I'm thinking it's 315, um, yeah, um, and just got the very variegation with that. And then the other one, um, I, it's another freebie I had po uh, pinned somewhere, and I used um, Weeks Love, which was a gift last year from Cricut, so thank you Cricut. Um, and just cute with the pinks and the red tones. Really like it. So I'll just make those into some sort of little pillow and it'll be kind of fun. Um, yeah, here is, I don't think it says on it. Um, but here is the, the chart for that, that one. And the other one, I don't know, I have it somewhere, but. Um, and then the other thing I finished up were two of the charts from the um, Veronique Angier Magic of Christmas book. And so many people have either stitched from it or have gotten it. Um, I can't say I love the I love the designs. I love 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 the designs. I can't say I love the charts like they're. They're a little bit hard for me to read. Um, maybe that's a problem. Maybe I should just like try to blow them up and it might be better. I think, I think I enjoy stitching them much more if I like the charts better, but um, these are really cute and I know um, I have a finish all planned out for them. I'm, I started a third one so I'm either going to stitch three or five. I'm not really sure yet. Um, an odd amount. Um, but I really think they're cute. And I will do more from the book. Um, I wish I could get my hands on some, some of the Easter ones of hers. Just so, so cute. But um, I don't know. I have enough to keep me busy. <laughs> um, let's 
see. Then I mentioned, oh, you guys. Oh, and this is, this is the book that I was talking about in case you haven't ever seen it. But it seems like more and more people are purchasing it and I found that right on Amazon. Um, then this is, um, I had talked about Chris from my local stitch group. Um, this was the chart she gifted us. And she made these cute thread drops. Coordinating colors and the scissor fob. She actually um, took bits of the chart and put it in there. And then she had symbolism on here. B, I don't know if you can see that, my initial. And the sunflower symbolizes her. And then she um, put the breast cancer ribbon on there in remembrance of Leanne. So, you know, just really, really a thoughtful gift. And it was fun to stitch. I. <laughs> I thought I ran out of thread and then um so I'm like oh, I'll have to just it, it was DMC so it wasn't like I couldn't go and buy some more but I, I really had wanted to get it finished and then I got up from my chair later that night and in our family room we have a wood floor but it has a pattern carpet on it and there was a piece of floss just the right size that I needed like kind of in the pattern of the rug that was that color and so I didn't see it but anyways I could finish it without buying more so look at that she dyed this fabric isn't that beautiful I just loved it and I placed it on there you know me and my little margins so that I could use the rest of it for something else because I thought it was so pretty um Chris uh finished hers as a flat flow fold and that looked really really pretty so I was thinking that's m maybe what I'm gonna do with mine too I think they're kind of fun to do and um I just I really really like it it's really a pretty pretty chart um so thank you Chris that was really it was fun and so thoughtful of you okay so um what else do we have here Oh, okay, so I have some finishes. Um, this is, is it Mr. Marshmallow? I think that's what it is. Um, Brenda Gervais. I used, I think I used everything called for. Maybe not the hat. And I think I just stitched an extra row in my, my hat. I, I like hats. I don't know if it was on this one or a different one. I just I like hats a little bit taller. Oh, the other thing I did was I used a satin stitch for the nose. That I I usually will change them up. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's just the odd thing about me is that um, I I don't know. I don't like super long snowman noses so I usually make them more traditional but this is the called for um, fabric and I think it's really cute I had this snowflake in my stash and I was thinking about you know doing some kind of square pillow and then I saw someone had a round finish and I'm like oh it just it fits perfectly in there so um, I didn't end up I just stitched the snowflakes that I had. Um, I had some little metal ones I was going to put on there, but the scale of it just wasn't right. And I thought, oh, I don't necessarily really, really need to do that. So I didn't. Um, then I just finished this up. Um, and after I got it done, I wish that I would have put the heart on an angle, so I probably am going to remount it and 
put it out. But I don't even know where I got this frame from. It was all, you know, unpainted. And so I just painted the truck a little bit. And um, the heart, the stitched heart, is a freebie chart from Tiny Modernist, I believe. Um, it goes along with the quilt that people are stitching. I used, I didn't have all the called for colors, so I just kind of used what I had. But I thought, you know, with a little bit of the heart trim on it, I originally had love painted here, and then I thought it looked too sloppy. So I might, I don't know. If I could get cut out letters, maybe I would put something there, or maybe I'll just leave it. But, so that one's done. And then, um, I did promise that I would show my, um, oh, and yeah, this is Mr. Marshmallow. And then what I'm going to show is the finish for January Wordplay by Brenda Gervais. So, I don't know, right when I got back to stitching, I um, found this little bench and right away I thought, oh, this would be perfect, perfect to put a little cross stitch piece on. And so I just made a little quilt out of it. Um, I think for the next ones I'm going to use ribbon because I, I made some little bias cut tubes but I think it just gets too too stiff I'd rather have a little bit drapier um but I just tacked those on so I could even take it off and do it again but it's for one month but I just thought you know it's gonna be cute like I had this bird and the top hat I'm like you know trying to pull things out of the chart that you know could sit on here and I just, I, I really like it. I think, you know, it's different. You don't want, at least I don't, I don't want everything just the same. So, um, so I think, you know, for February, I might just, I don't know if I'll have some hearts or, you know, something sitting there, whatever kind of is in the chart, I'll be able to pull out. Um, I did change up a few things things a few colors I made the birds red my colors are a little bit more vivid I think I stitched two over two um this was 28 count or 32 count um but and I made the wagon red because I thought oh it'd be cute for a red wagon but I just think I don't know it it speaks to me I like it and I think it will be fun um, I think I'll really be able to, um, like, because I like the finish, like, it'll spur me on to get the, the month stitched this year. Um, unlike some other series where I started and then it's kind of like, uh, yeah, do I want to do this or not? Um, I, I know there's, there's... I don't know. I, I, it just, I think they're really cute. I mean, and really the words go pretty fast. So, um, I think if you, if you haven't done them, try them be, or at least try one. Cause they really, they're cute and they're quick. Um, someone, um, there were people looking for charts and I know someone found them from, um, Julie at Total Framing and Needlework. So that might be a good source if you're still looking for them. Um, you know, some of the shops have them. So call around to the local needlework shops and see if you can get them. Uh, oh, the things I plan to start before February 1st are Spring Fling. This was gifted to me last year so kind and I I just love this and I got some pink from keepsakes oops yeah my lights really getting bad it's nice because it's what time is it 
it's like almost five o'clock and it's not pitch black out. So you can already tell that the days are getting longer, which I love. Um, I also got this one when we went to Stitch Con. Um, grow a garden. I think it's really cute. I've always loved that saying. So I hope to get that kitted up. Um, I started working on this a little bit, but not enough to, to really show it. But I had started this series, and I'll, I'll show you. Um, I ended up changing my finish, but I, I stitched March ready, so now I'm going to do April. I just have been working on the border, so it's not worth even pulling that out. But it's officially started, so I can go on to that. Um... I just have a little bit more to go on Spring ABCs. I think I didn't like some of my wording color and thought, oh, I'll put it away and see how it speaks to me <laughs> as it gets closer to spring. But this is really pretty well, pretty well done. I hope we can see the colors. So I switched out a lot of the colors. Um, this, the top color, I think I wish I would have used all the dark. But, so I'll tweak that a little bit and hopefully I'll get it to a point where it's what I like. Okay, um, then I've been working on Shepherd's Bush, this bulb chart. This one's another one that's almost done. I think I, I have some, I have some fill work to do yet on it. But, um, and I have the buttons now. So, but it really, the main part is done. So, February? <laughs> we'll see. I think I'm kind of getting to a point where maybe I'm overestimating what one person can accomplish in 28 days. But we'll see. Oh, and then I had started, I started May last year. Maybe I'll just work on May if I can't get my hands on April. I really like April. I think it has daffodils on it. But May's cute too. And I just have a little bit of a start on this one. It's hardly worth worth showing, but um, a little bit of the barn. So that one's a cute one. And, you know, I, I showed my, oh, this is one um, both Leanne and I have. It's um, the work basket, or work basket of seasons. And, um, yeah, I think, I think I have two of these, and so, um, I'm getting really close to 6,000 6, subscribers, so once I hit that, I'm definitely going to do a giveaway. Um, I've come up with a couple more charts of Leanne's. I know people really, really like those, um, that we both have the same, and this is one of them. And I think I even have the little cardboard that they go on as well. Um, so I'll probably, you know, include that as one of the items once that number is reached. So if you're not a subscriber, um, please hit the little button. Okay. And let's see. Oh, I still have one, one of the, um, spring trios to stitch and I haven't started on it I think it's the it's the rainbow one 
but I would like to get these finished up this year too so that I can get them made into something. I have the other two. I am going to just do little pillows, but I don't know. I, I know I changed the colors on these, that, uh, but you know, basically the same tones. They're just, they're just cute and cheery and a lot, of, a lot more stitchy. So I guess that's what I'm thinking about with wordplay. Compared to like these, these things, I guess because there's no border to begin with on wordplay, you just, you know, letters are easy to stitch. And usually there's only like one bigger motif on each one. The, you know, the rest of them are like maybe 20 stitches, you know, for an item. So they really do go fast. I wish, I wish more things were like that. <laughs> uh, as far as life, Christmas was great. We, you know, spent time with the family, um, went up to the cabin after Christmas. We were up there for New Year's, which was kind of fun. We used to always do that when our kids were little. Um, so our son was with us and so the guys went ice fishing a couple times and um, there was a bald eagle around. So we had fun watching that and just you know a little bit of snow it wasn't really all that cold so it was nice to get outside a little bit um had the grandkids for sleepover that was great i mean they've been asking for that for eons we were able to um do it after christmas so you know still contamination free and so um they were they were so cute because the three-year-old came for the first time i wasn't sure how he was going to be because he's not always the best of sleepers but um he was the last one to wake up in the morning so that was excellent and he just he seemed to really enjoy himself and the other two were like can we come for two nights next time so we um looked at the calendar and and started our quarantine i had to go to the dentist um so I guess that's about all. I mostly have been trying to weed through <laughs> some stuff. And if you'd see my view in this room, you wouldn't think I was very successful. But um, I have been going through things, you know, coming out of the basement and um, have a big pile for Goodwill or St. Vincent de Paul in the living room. So. One of these days we'll get a load of stuff there. You know, you look at like just some end tables and stuff that I keep thinking, oh, I could chalk paint them. And I'm like, eh, but will I? No, so just just get rid of them. You know, they're just taking up space. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm trying to get like my floss organized. I have a new system I hit upon, so if it, Turns out it works for me. I'll share with you some other time. Um, but other than that, you know, I guess um, we're almost February. So I always feel, you know, if the weather hasn't been too bad and we're in February, there's like light at the end of the tunnel. So, but in the meantime, I hope you all stay well. Um, have a blessed new year and continue to fill the world with love. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. The wax is dripping on your face. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.